What we're going to do is we'll tidy up. This is the last question here, five. D, I guess. Um, I know a few of you are kind of looking at it sideways. You're like, oh, but it's not obvious. What do I do? We'll, we'll tidy this up. We'll tie it in a nice bow. And then we'll move on to the second half of the, this will be quicker, um, the heading that we did right at the start of the day. Okay. So this is the circle that they give you. Some of it is easy to see and some of it's not so easy. So we're being asked to find um, the center and the radius of this circle. Which of those two pieces of information is easier to see? Center. The center, right? It's like smack bang there. So you can all tell me that the center has coordinates one, one, one. one comma one. So happy times with that. But then you look and there's not any nice neat point. They like they don't tell you how far away this is, like what that x coordinate is. So you can't easily calculate it. But I want you to remember, like the radius, what is the radius? It's the distance from the center, the center which is often at the, at the origin, but not always. From the center to where? To, the to anywhere on the circumference, right? The radius goes from the center to anywhere. So for example, whatever the radius is, that's how long it is, right? Just so ha happens that that's not a very useful place to go because I don't know anything about this point, right? Where might be a more useful point on the circumference I could use? Okay, so I could go up to here, right? From the center to this spot on the circumference, that will be the radius. I'm going to go ahead and say there's an even easier place you could go. Uh, the origin is also right on the circumference, right? And because that's there, I can draw myself a nice, neat right angle triangle. And you already know how tall the right angle triangle is. One. It's one. You know how wide the right angle triangle is. It's also one. So you can use what we started off today with Pythagoras. And you reckon, oh, this is one, one, and root two. Okay. So, if that's the radius, if the radius equals root 2, what will the equation be? Uh, 2. Four, two. <laughs> Let's start with some brackets, rather than throwing out random numbers, okay? Uh, Ishan, do you want to start us off? Don't do the whole thing, just start us off. Okay, so I'm going to have something square. It's going to be x minus 1, or square. Can someone else take over? X minus y. y minus one. I've done the x, so I'm going to do y minus 1, all squared, and then that equals 2, two. just 2. Because the square root of the right-hand side, in my nicely form, that's it. That's the radius. To understand semicircles, before we get to all these weird, wacky, crazy ones with weird centers and weird radii, it's often helpful in maths to, when you're going into a new area, start with the simplest version of what you can. Now, what was the simple object that we started today with? We didn't just look at any circle, we looked at a specific one. The unit circle, right? So we're going to start with the unit circle again, right? This guy here, x squared plus y squared equals 1. It's a nice, simple object, and we can use it, bless you, to work out what semicircles are like, okay? Now, x squared plus y squared, center is at the origin, radius is equal to 1. What I'm going to do here with you is, if we make, if we rearrange this equation such that we have x or y as, a, as the subject. It will make it really easy to see what the semicircle is. Let me show you. Okay? For instance, all of the, um, the parabolas and hyperbolas and straight lines, we're used to seeing them in this form, right? y equals whatever. y equals mx plus c, or y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, or 1 on x, or whatever. Right? We usually make y the subject. So here, what would happen, what do I need to do first to make why the subject? Can anyone tell me the first step that might be helpful? Y squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. Okay, I'm going to subtract, see this x squared here, as Rassen's identified. That doesn't belong. I want it to be on the other side, so I'm going to subtract from both sides. So you can follow along with me. I get this. So far, so good. Now, I wanted a y equals some stuff, right? Not a y squared equals some stuff. So if I've got something squared, what should I do to both sides? Take the square root, right? Now, just be cautious with this next bit. Because if, for example, you had a question, you don't need to write this down. If I had a question like this, x squared equals 25, right? You can take the square root on the left-hand side, but you know you don't just write a single number on the right-hand side, right? It's not just 5, it's plus or minus, because both of those can get squared to give you 25. Same thing applies here. So I'm going to write plus or minus, and then what do I write? Square root of all of the stuff that's here. 1 minus x squared, okay? Now, what this is, remember, plus or minus is just a lazy mathematician's way of saying two separate things. And I'd love us to write what those two separate things are. So this is shorthand for 
just like in the quadratic equation, uh, quadratic formula, sorry, two completely separate things. There's the negative one, like this, and then there's also the positive one, when there's a plus, 1 minus x squared. Okay. Now what you're staring at right now are two semicircles, right? And you can tell me which ones they are, because the square root, this guy over here when it's positive, this thing is only, can only be positive values, right? Like I know that this is plus or minus 5, but what's the square root of 16? Four. It's just 4. It's not negative 4, right? It's just 4. So see this guy here, this is only positive. So the range of this is going to be above 0. So where on my unit circle will this be? It's going to be the, the top part, right? So this guy up here, in fact I'm even going to draw it as such. This guy up here is the positive square root of 1 minus x squared. Does that make sense? This is y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared, right? And you know, you might have Desmos nearby, you might be able to chuck in y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. There he is, right? So there's our semicircle, just like we expected, okay? What's the other part going to tell you? Because this is like both of them. This one says both of them. If this is, sorry, say it again. What's x squared? Yeah, so it, it kind of looks like a parabola, right? You got x squared, but that square root kind of turns into the circle. So, so see how this is the top half, right? This is the top half? What happens when you slap a minus sign on the front? It, gets, it gives you the bottom half, right? So this is underneath. So if you go to Desmos and you just chuck a minus sign at the front. Bam. There you go. There's the underneath. There's the other semicircle. Okay? So you've got top half. It's the plus. You have the bottom half, look at that minus sign that's there. Okay? So this is top and bottom. How would we do left and right? What are you thinking? Ah. Okay, so you see how when we went through, right? We started with this guy and we made y the subject. Okay? If we went through and made x the subject instead. Okay. Yeah, you're just like you're literally swapping all the x and y's around. Do you see that, right? So underneath here, I don't even think you need to do the working, right? You're going to get x equals, if I made x a subject instead of y the subject, you're still going to have a plus or minus, right? You're still going to have the square root, and then you're getting it 1 minus y squared. Now just like before, this is shorthand for two separate things. There's going to be the negative one, and the positive one. Which one do you think is the left and which one is the right? Um, the left one is the left or right one. <laughs> Conveniently, the, negative one. the negative one is to the left because look at the, our axes, right? To the left over here is negative values of x. So this guy here is the left half. And that leaves this guy as the, the right half. And just like before, if you'll bear with me while I fiddle with my equation. <laughs> I'm glad you like that. There you go. There's the right hand semicircle, just like we saw before. Okay? I made x the subject, and because x is about left and right, and if you're restricted to positive values, you go to the Right. Okay? That's so cool. It's pretty neat, right? Now, the, the, the tricky thing is that the water gets deep pretty fast after this, and I'm going to let you guys explore this a little on your own. What circle were we playing with to make the bottom and the top, the left and the right? We've been playing with the unit circle the whole time, right? So if I wanted a semicircle that was not <laughs> centered on the origin, that perhaps didn't have a radius of exactly one, these numbers are going to become a little more complicated. Let me give you an example. You don't have to write this down. Just think through it with me, right? What if you saw something like this? Okay. This is relatively simple. I've only changed one thing. Okay, so think about this, right? You could check this. You know how we started with this and then we made y the subject, right? You can do this in reverse, can't you? 
I will first note that y has a range restriction on it. It's greater than or equal to zero. Because this is a square root, right? You can never get a negative out of that. Okay. And then I'm going to start doing stuff to this. Square both sides. You okay with that? And then I'm going to add x squared to both sides. You know what this is. Center is at the origin. Radius is? Three. Radius is three. This is, um, this is three squared, right? How about something like this? I'm not even going to rearrange it this time. Have a look at it. What do you think that 25 is telling you? The radius is this thing under here, right? It's going to be the square root of 25. The radius is 5. What do you think this tells you? Um, the y, how, how much it goes to the left. This tells you about the oh, shift, um, right? Yeah, it's a y, so it's up, down. Is it up or is it down? Down, down. Up, 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 up. Put into Desmos, have a look. It's up, by the way, it's up, okay? So you can see they're going to start to get a little more complicated as you move them around, as you make them smaller or bigger, but it's the same deal, okay? 